Good morning. Happy Wednesday. Hello to my artist friends. <clears throat> oh, I just got notification that I'm live. Seems a little funny that it told me. Hi, Bill. Hi, Jillian. Hi, Laurel. How are you guys? Good morning. Good morning. Hi, Allie. Allie, I want to know how many windows have you painted during this holiday season? Hi, Rosemary. Let's see everybody. Good morning, Emerson. How are you? So our friend Allie for the Soul has been doing all kinds of beautiful um, window uh, murals. I guess that's what they're called. And they're amazing. And I feel like you're doing, you're just killing it. Hi, Gabby. Good morning, everyone. Hi, Michael. So, are we ready to paint? I feel like I've had, hi, Gail, a super productive day so far. Um, it's the weirdest thing. I keep getting up earlier and earlier and wanting to go to bed earlier and earlier, but I need this to stop. It's crazy, but I am more productive in the morning, but then I get more tired by the end of the day. I don't understand any of it. Hi, Sheila. So this morning, um, I'm going to paint a, a bird that it's called a male ruby crested kinglet. And Susan Mahon um, Gamble sent it to us. She's in my inspiring art group. Um, and a friend of hers took the photo. And we have 5 a.m. Isn't it crazy? I mean, I'm so productive. Like, I did so much already this morning. I've <clears throat> worked on a watercolor thing that I'm going to do with inspiring art. I um, packed things to go to, I have to take to a gallery. I did some um, design, like email response things. I've <laughs> texted people about Christmas. Like I've gotten so much done already. Hi, Ellen. Hi, Susie. <clears throat> I think somehow I think if I keep getting up earlier, my days will get longer and I'll get more done in the middle, but it doesn't seem to work that way. I haven't figured that out yet, but wouldn't that be a fun idea? So here is, is the, uh, and let me know if you can hear my music playing. Good morning, Lori. How are you? <clears throat> um, I don't know. I have a light on there. Let me shoot that up so it's not in the way. So I, I need to paint more birds. I actually sell so many birds paintings that I just need to paint them more. And that's when I'm taking them to a gallery in them. Um, in uh, Westchester today. Good morning, Judy. How are you? <clears throat> it's good to see you too, Lori. Very, very fun. Okay, so let's get started here. Oh my gosh, this is fun. <clears throat> I always feel energized when you guys are here with me doing this. <clears throat> like I said, I'm usually doing, well, I'm usually about finished painting by this point in the morning, most days. <clears throat> um, But, um, yeah, I was doing watercolors this morning. I've been, good morning, Martha. How are you? Oh, good. Thank you, Ellen. You know I always worry about that. It's the weirdest thing I can't paint without a little bit of something going on in the background. I don't know why that is. I just like a little bit of, a little bit of music, a little bit of sound. I think it, um, it's that thing of that getting in that space where you kind of lose your sense of time. I think that's all a little bit part of it. Like, I used to always, um... I always think I did better like in math class in school because I could do artwork while the teacher was teaching. Like I had a, a math teacher who would let me do that. So he would let me like draw in my notebook while I was supposed to be paying attention. And in all honesty, I really think I paid better attention when I could be doing something else. So I like the mix of the sound going on. That kind of keeps one part of my brain busy. <clears throat> mixed with actually, you know, creating the art. I don't know. I'm just rambling. I have no idea if that has anything to do with anything, but it seems to work for me to have a little music or a little something to listen to. I also love listening to podcasts. I've been <clears throat> binge listening to um, Windowsill Chats with Margot Tanto. I think I've listened to every single one of them. A math teacher. Who was the math teacher? Let, let me, Martha, you, oh my gosh, I can't remember who it was. Let me think about that. Martha went to high school with me. 
and remembers everyone. <clears throat> Who was that that let me do that? Uh, it'll come to me. <clears throat> yeah, I love her podcast. I kind of get hooked on one. And then I don't want them to end. Like, I want to just wake up and listen to one of Marco's interviews every morning. <laughs> of course, there aren't there, there aren't that many, but... Oh, wait, I closed my jar. I'm not doing well at talking. Hi, Carol Ann. How are you? <clears throat> um, okay, now I'm thinking what... I want to keep my background simple and neutral. And I'm not sure what color I want to make it. I have no idea. I think my paint's a little wet here. Yes, I, Lori, that's the funniest thing. I thought about that uh, this morning. I was thinking her interviews make me feel like I'm making all these new friends. Of course, I don't really know any of them, but like they're all on my friend wish list. I always have friend wish lists and, and I always like, I've done it throughout my whole life. I always like find people I want to be friends with and then I kind of scope them out and, and meet them and then keep them for the rest of my life. And I'd say that's one of my like magic powers is being able to do that. Um, and, you know, it usually never fails me. I have quite a wonderful collection of friends doing it that way. <laughs> oh, I gotta turn my music down. I feel like you're gonna be able to hear it. And even if, even if you can't, if I'm just worrying about it, then that's something. I don't know. Are these too crazy of colors? Why not? Why not be, have crazy colors, right? Um, I'll do a little, little bit of blue in the background. And I've been compiling a list. I need to buy some new oil paints. Like I always say, I have like a an addiction to buying art supplies, but <clears throat> and I honestly just bought paint. Like, how can I possibly need more? But I just heard of a color that I don't have. It's called manganese violet. And I think that I might, I might need that. Well, that's a happy mess, isn't it? I think that's all I need. Yeah, the crazy colors are good, right? Laurel said, do you ever listen to Art for Your Ear? Yes, I do. I think I've listened to every single one of those too. Art for your ear I love. And what are some of my other favorites? Um, Danielle Chrissy, yes. Yes, I love hers. Love, love, love. Um, no, wait. Okay, so I'm going to get out my RNF pigment sticks now and have some fun with those. Um... Want anything crazy? No, I don't want to go too crazy. Not too crazy, just a little bit. I keep pushing my messy middle envelope all the time. And I'm just loving the journey. Like, I, it keeps getting messier and messier. Sort of fun to, like, do that. I, Rosemary, I will buy, I wrote it down here, um, uh, uh, ha M. Holland, is that what it's called? M. Holland is the one I wrote down here. It was just a really brief thing. Multi <laughs> Glory, yeah, I'm a little crazy, yeah. It is, it, sometimes it gets tricky. I stop talking for a while when I get to the part where I'm like holding my breath if I'm doing something very detailed, but I do love. Oh, that's pretty, that mixed together. I hope I don't lose all of that. Um, put some of this in the background. Yeah, some of my favorite paintings I've done recently, my messy middle has been like out of control and I'm loving it. Yeah, I feel like something's wrong with my Instagram. It seems a little wonky that it's telling me that I'm live in case I want to watch. Like all my, when I have those messages in the back side of Instagram, my primary and general people are all in one, it's both lists are the same. And when I get a message, I don't see it in there. I have to go find it somewhere else. 
And for a girl who gets confused where people are corresponding with me and how I have to go back and find things, that is just way too hard to manage. So I don't know if I, <laughs> I need to write to Instagram. I feel like Instagram's not really a real person to even write to. Well, there is a messy start. Maybe I'll put where my eye's gonna go so I don't forget. I want it kind of right here. And then the little beak, but I'll put that in at the end, I think. All right, that is a fabulously messy start. So I'm gonna pull you down here and mix up some color. So I'm gonna mix, I've been trying to keep my background super messy. Oh, Michael said, I feel like social media is wonky this past week, especially Instagram. Yes, I agree. I thought it was me. Like I went in and tried to clear my cachet because I have too many cachets. I don't even really understand what that is, but I think it's all your stuff built up. Like I must have cachet energy around me like crazy. I can't even, I'm not even organized enough to even do that, but I cleared my cachet. I like, like undid it, rebooted it, signed back in, started my phone, did all the things and nothing's fixing it. Okay. Let me, okay, so anyway, I was saying I like to keep those like bright, crazy colors popping through. So I want to mix some like these neutral grayish greens. And I pulled this out. I made this color chip the other day. I really feel like that's some fun color that's in there. And that is um, violet gray um, and uh, titanium buff. Oh, what is that? Clearing the cachet, Lori? Is that what you're asking me? That's like where all your thoughts get stored and you end up like, it's kind of like, um, you know, your junk drawer in, in your house and you have to every now and then go through your junk drawer. It's exactly what it is. And you can have it in your computer. Like it's in everywhere where you search for things. Like it's in Instagram. I think there's probably a cache on Facebook there. It's stores. So like when you go back in your history to look for things, it's all in there. Like in, in your, like if you use Google or or Safari or any of those things. Like sometimes if they get wonky, you have to go clear your cache and clear your junk drawer. My junk drawer is super messy. And so is my palette. I need to clean that off, but not, not today. Um, okay, now I need to focus here. Get my palette knife and mix up some of that color. I was just, that's the violet um, gray. Is that what it is? And titanium buff. It's the Gamblin titanium buff. So these are very different. This is Williamsburg titanium buff, which is beautiful. And that's what I have right here. But I wrote on there that I use this Gamblin titanium buff and look how different it is. So that's Gamblin's titanium buff. A little closer. And that's what I used to mix that color. But look how different they are. That's so much lighter than that. Okay, I have to make sure that my phone doesn't fall here. All right. Ooh, that's pretty. Maybe I'll mix a little bit more of that. And then let it skew in one direction or another. Yes, it is. It's like warm. Warm white, I would say, is even a little lighter. It is fun playing with different colors and seeing how different they are with different brands. Um, that's great. Oh, the vi oh, Susie, the violet gray. I think I kept that out here when I put it. That's I don't know why I always lose this tube of color. It is old Holland. Violet gray. You can tell it's a well-loved tube. Now I want to skew that a little bit green. So I'm going to put a little bit of Viridian in there. Oh, that's really pretty. I love the neutrals in, in the bird. I could even go a little bit darker with that. It's amazing how little paint 
you really need, especially if you do that crazy underpainting color. Um, I'm gonna mix them with blue. Sometimes I only mix like three top colors and it still turns out. Need a dark, dark, dark. That's a little messy pile. When I get to the end, I should just, my first color, I should mix so much more of it. And then I need red for his uh, little plume at the top. So I want to darker. I usually do my colors down. I'm doing them across today. I don't know how that happened. Just going to go with it. That got darker than I wanted it to, but that's okay. Good morning, everybody who's just joining. So what's everybody having today, coffee or tea? I'm still on my first pot of coffee, which is pretty good for me. Um, I thought about a second, but I think I want that. Um, what am I gonna do? I want that to go a little, I'm gonna add a little bit of this color into it. Yeah, that looks better. Coffee for me, coffee for me too. And then I need a lighter that. So I'm gonna use this lighter one. Gosh, I could just mix colors all day long. Coffee, lots of coffee today. All right, and I need, what should I do in the background? Kind of a, maybe a neutral green. Mm, I don't know. Okay, I think I'm gonna use my, love this color, and I might skew that a little gray. So maybe I, I wanted to make a gray <coughs> today. I just was thinking about grays today. Um, So I'm gonna take, I think my manganese blue hue, which is getting a little thick here. I do not like that. We're not gonna use that color. I'm gonna use, um, I'm gonna use Viridian since I've used that before. And I'm gonna use a little bit of um, yellow ochre. green, but I do want it to be a little bit green. I'm going to take that and mix it into this and see what it looks like. Carolyn, they're straight from the tube and thin with the... Oh, thank you, Anita. I missed a question. I was busy thinking about my background color. I do too. I usually use... Sap green's kind of my go-to. Oh, that's nice, isn't it? I think I might need some more of that. Let me put a little bit more of my... <clears throat> What did I do with my um, mang or my blue? Gosh, I have some of my paints in front of me, some of them in my little bowls. I have all my little bowls of paint. And there's one. And then I have another one over here. These are like my blues and greens. But I love these compote bowls. I always look for new ones. Like that's my favorite little one. Um, and that's a pretty cool one. These are like. It knows. Now we, I need to find my. Oh, here it is. I wanted this Vasari color. I'm going to put in a Vasari order pretty soon. I have a bunch of my colors set to the side because I know which ones I need to order. All right. I think that's good for a start for the background. So my goal is to let colors shine through and to pick up colors from underneath as I do it. So I don't really have a lot of colors on my palette. Just a few reds for that little plume, some neutrals, and I hope I mixed enough of that. I can always do more. All right, I'll pull you back here to my happy, crazy. Oops, I gotta push you guys over a little bit. 
I love writing, but it can really take over. Yeah, it is it is hard to, yeah, use restraint and only use a little bit. It is funny. I feel like my art's never restrained, and sometimes you do need a little bit of that in the mix. All right, and I've really been loving these colors. These are um, from Trakel. They're called Spectrum 3000 Bright. Oh, can you see that? I like them a lot. Oh, Judy, I know I have that postcard sitting right in front of my computer. I think I'm going to go on there and get a couple new things. Because with Vassar, you have to... Whoops, I opened up my medium, and I didn't mean to do that. Let me put that to the side. I, I don't use my medium at all anymore. Um, all right, let me organize a little plume here. Terry says, going to New York City next week and wish Vassar was open. Is it really still closed? Yeah, we keep wanting to do a trip to that. That would be so much fun. Oh, I have to remember uh, the way I cropped this, that top part where it says Monday, that's part of the painting. So I need to pull his head down a little bit. Maybe even a little bit more. You know what, I'm going to put some of my background color in here. Oh, open. Ellen, you said open in PA. Did you say it's in, in, um, where did you tell me? Up near Lehigh. I can't remember where you told me it was. I have to make a, a trip to do that. Why do you not use it? Susie, I put enough up medium in my underneath layers there where it looks like such a happy mess that I don't need it anymore. It would get a little bit too wet. Um, and I just like how the paint feels to put it on kind of more thickly. I don't know if that's a word. It is now. I feel like his little plume is too tall. Let me pull that color down in. It's just my the way I paint. And I love how that like bleeds into that a little bit. And I love those little happy accidents. And that hard thing is you can't overwork your painting. You just have to let those things happen. And um, not fuss with them. Oh yeah, now I just use it in the base layer. I use the medium. Put his little beak in there in a minute. Yep, I did use the RNF pigment sticks. Like there's some you can see where where I kind of did that, but yep, I did. I do love using those. I like that little green back there. I feel like it got quiet. So where's everybody from? Do you ever use medium in your top layer? Um, oh, maybe on a large painting or if I'm doing, well, mostly only in a large painting because I do these all, um, all in one sitting. So I won't get my medium back out. But on when I'm working on large paintings, sometimes if I'm doing um, like some glazes on it, I will. I'll use oil in it. Like this one. I'll show you the one behind me here. My studio might be a little messy, but um, I'm deciding. I think I might be finished. That's one that I probably did go in with some because then it gets um, super dry when I wait. But I love to see some of my transparent colors are showing through. Some of my, my pigment. You can see some of the pigment sticks. Um... Trekel, T R E, they are T R E K E L L brushes. Now I've been lost in in um, exploring buying like uh, stuff for watercolors. I need to stick with one thing. Although that's what I love about my inspiring art group. I can play with different things and not have to always do the same. But I always come back to oil painting as my favorite. 
Florida in the winter, Ontario in the summer. That sounds wonderful. Well, let me do the eye a little bit. Sometimes if I get the eye in, then that gives me confidence that it's all going to come together when it looks so messy. Especially on birds, and as well as when I paint um, animal portraits, which I do a lot of, um, it's all in the eyes. Like As long as I can pull the eyes off and have it look like the animal, it all seems to come together. Love that. <clears throat> I keep everything loose except I go in with the into the eyes and <clears throat> get a little brighter blue in there. Dig down in here. It's the part where I hold my breath. And then when I get my eyes, sometimes it gets on there a little thicker, so it takes longer to dry. I want that beak to be right about there. Okay, now I'm going with some of my neutrals. Good morning to anybody who's joining us right now. everybody ready for the holidays? I'm excited for Isabel to come home. It'd be nice to have everyone home for a little bit. Um, Tally says, are RNF pig permanently dry on top of acrylics? Hmm. I, I wouldn't use them with acrylics at all because acrylic paint is like plastic and the RNF pigment sticks are oil based. So I only use them in an oil painting. Yeah, I'm not either, Allie. I'm going super relaxed. Like if I don't have gifts for someone, I'm not even worrying about it. Keep getting knocked off. Miss the color in the background. Hmm. Uh -oh. Yeah, I did that. Did you see me mix it, Ellen? You probably saw me mix that color. Wonder why you're getting knocked off. Yeah, the internet has been wonky lately. Not at all. Time is going. Time is going so fast, Michael. I don't know how you do all the things you do. He is constantly posting all of his decor, and it's gorgeous. Like I'm lucky. I just got my tree up. With the coaxing of my husband. I don't know. That could have easily not even happened, but it looks great. We got really cool lights at um, last year. Oh, I know. <laughs> Michael, how many trees do you have? Do you really have all those trees in your house? Um, we got really cool lights at um, Terrain last year, and they're like blues and greens, and they're so cool. And my husband went and tried to buy some more to because he thought we needed a few more. And, like, they changed the whole color palette. Now you can't even get those same colors, <clears throat> which is frustrating. It's like... You know, when you find that favorite shirt or pair of pants and you go back to get it in every color and they're already sold out and they're never making them again. I'm like, what is that all about? You perfected it. Let's stick with it. <clears throat> Three trees this year. They're all gorgeous. If any of you don't follow, Inspired by Charm is Michael, who we're talking about. And he, um, his um, uh, Instagram feed is gorgeous. Michael, have you ever been to Terrain? If you haven't, you really should go. Oh, Anita. Okay, yeah, I will. I'll do that. Yes. Oh, yes, Lori. You would love, it, love following him. Michael, do you know Lori? You should know Lori. So I'm trying to let colors of that underpainting show through. So I'm really only adding mostly neutrals back in to what I'm doing. Just 
one's a little larger, but that's okay. And I do, I love these greens down in here too. One of your ornaments is on my tree. Oh, yay. Oh, thank you, Michael. I love that. And all my fun ornaments. I love making those. I do have a few more if anybody's uh, looking for a fun gift idea. My ornaments are of uh, birds. They're all little original kind of funky abstract acrylic bird paintings. So fun to make. <clears throat> Yeah, terrain is so expensive. Oh, you've never been to the store. And their restaurant is amazing. It's not, it's like maybe, I don't know, an hour from where I live. So I do get to go there sometimes. The best is time to go is right after Christmas when everything's on sale. It is so expensive and so inspiring too. Oh, Lori, Lori Seibert. Uh, Lori, it's L-O-R-I-S-I-E-B-E-R-T dot studio. She just said hi, Michael, to you up there. <clears throat> Lori does beautiful art and um, does, oh my gosh, Lori, tell them what you, your, uh, do you still do the uh, trip? I love that. Hi, Nancy. Oh, thank you, Allie. <laughs> I love my group. You guys take care of me. Isn't it amazing, Joanne? So I got to meet Lori. She did one of her, she um, does a trip and and she came to Lancaster one time and I got to actually meet her, which was so much fun. We went to uh, Primitives by Kathy, which is a licensing company. I guess that's what that's called, Lori, right? I don't know all the terminology very well. Um played hooky from work and went and met her. It was so great to me. Yes, that was very fun. I feel like I don't get out in the real art world now. I really don't with COVID happening. It's like I don't get out to actually meet people very often. No, I don't know if I'm getting lost in the weeds here. I might be. Meaning I'm thinking too much about details. Art licensing, yes. I love that color in there. Isn't that pretty? Um, I think I might need a little more detail in the eyes. I need some whites down in here at the feathers. I need to make this a little darker down here. I feel like it's too, um, it doesn't look dimensional enough. So I think I need to add. It's like you kind of paint what you see and then you have to let go a little bit and add whatever you think it needs. Kind of a mix of both. And trusting the process. Is it possible to lie? I love seeing you draw. Yeah, I was thinking about, oh, you have to go busy day. Oh, bye, Lori. Thanks for coming by. Um... I was thinking about, and I don't know if it's a good idea or not. I was thinking about maybe doing this over on YouTube instead of doing it here on Instagram. I'm not sure what the pros and cons of that are. <clears throat> but I sometimes feel a little limited with this. Look how sweet he is now. This is a male bird. Yes. A, yes. Male bird. Let me do a little more detail around his eyes here. part where I hold my breath now when I look at it in here I feel like his eye is not um, 
just softening those edges a little bit. Um, it looks a little flat on the one side here when I look at it. And it's funny how it looks different to me when I look at what you're looking at as opposed to what I'm looking at. What I see in per in person, I guess, is what I mean. Maybe it's, I just needed to be a little larger. I think that's what it was. So I looked a little small. Hmm, what do we think here? Maybe a little dark over here, and then maybe I'll go in with a big larger brush. Just, I need like some whites where his little feathers are over there. Maybe this part needs to go a little lighter here. It's um, it's probably just the angle. Yeah, I think it might be Anita. I feel like I need a little light in his eye. When you add Christmas to your birds, do you use photo reference? Um, uh, I'm trying to think. I did in the beginning like that one that I do of the bluebird I did. But the last few I did not. I just wing it. Because, like, then I'd have to go get the hat and photograph it, and that's just not going to happen. So, no, I've just been kind of winging it. Oh, maybe I need a little white here. Now I'm fussing with the details. That's what I tell you not to do. All right, I think his eye looks good. I like all the bits showing through. I need a little bit where... Or like it's um, some whites in here. I just need to lighten up some areas. Winging it, <laughs> yes, that's right. Did I say that? Yes, I'm definitely, I wing it a lot. Um, my goal is to do that more. Like I would love to have more time to paint from life too and not always paint from photo reference. But, you know, I do what's easiest so that I don't have reasons not to dive into doing it at all. That's why I like painting from photos and I fortunately have a lot of uh, wonderful people that I've met along the way that are willing to let me use their photos as photo reference because I'd also love to do more photography and go out and photograph my own birds, but um, I just don't seem to find the time. I am noticing birds in life more than I ever did. He does have a built-in stocking cap. Oh my gosh, and then I was thinking about stocking caps because I painted one the other day. And now I want to make stocking caps. So I was looking up knitting patterns. And then I decided I need to make Christmas stockings for my kids' significant others. So I might work on that over the Christmas holiday if I have time. Actually, I should order them now, though. But I love to knit. I love to do way too many things. Um... Do you feel like that's too tall? I think it is a little too tall. I think I need to shorten that a little bit. It's just kind of bothering me. So I'm gonna take clean, I'm cleaning my brush in between with my paper towel. And um, Let me 
That's a little bit better, isn't it? Now I need some lightness. And his plumes. That gave it a little more dimension. That looks better. And I need a little bit on his nose and I'm almost finished, I think. Do you see anything I'm missing? Anything I need to pay attention to? But yeah, definitely his top of his, his nose. Beak. It's not a nose, it's a beak. A little more beak. Yeah, I agree, Ellen. <clears throat> and we had the underneath of the beak. It's funny, sometimes I'm painting a bird and, and it'll turn out kind of looking grouchy and I can never figure out why. Like, it's not necessarily that it looks grouchy in the photo, just sometimes they turn out that way, but I just assume that that's what they're meant to. Is that better, Ellen? Is that enough more beak, beakishness? I think I need a little, a little more. I don't want to mess up. I love all that showing through. <clears throat> what do you think of the background? Is it too boring? Do you think I should put polka dots or something? Angry birds, yes. <laughs> Angry birds. Um, or keep it neutral. Or is it too much? No, I like that it's green with that pop of red. I like how kind of monochromatic it is with them with that pop. Um, I like his eye. Well, I think it's pretty good unless you guys see anything else I need to adjust. I think that I think that the neutralness makes him come forward more too. All right, I'm gonna sign it before I mess it up because painting is so much fun it's hard to know when to stop because. signature so there's there's my reference and it's a ruby rusted kinglet I will post that because um Susan said we could use it so I will post that in um I will post it in on my blog on my website where you can go get it and then I'll put the link I'll upload this then to YouTube so you can watch it there there's my palette and now wait what was that question oh well i varnish it yes i use just use a little bit of spray varnish on it it's called um i don't know i, th I don't have it here with me but i do use a spray varnish captured a little naughty i like that well so what should we name them oh i need i always love naming these birds i think it's so fun to name them kind of old-fashioned names and give them personality traits um, so I will save this. It'll be on my YouTube channel. And if you're there, be sure to like my, my, uh, posts. If you like them, thumbs up and subscribe. <clears throat> I will save it at all. So then the photo reference, if you want to do it yourself, that will be on, um, on my blog and my blog on my website at kimmeyersmith.com. And then also like, if you do paint it, like do share it and, and tag me, see some polka dot background sometime. Okay. I will do that because I love doing polka dots. Polka dots are like something that I'm a little obsessed with. It's crazy. <laughs> You're welcome, Joanne. And thanks to Susan for um, sending me this photo reference. It was great and it was fun. So we'll do it again next week. Um, and thanks for coming. I will save this. I'll see you soon. Goodbye. Thank you.